our Savior has come. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. So honored that you're here with us today. Good morning, DC Live. Uh, my name is Johnny. I'm one of the staff pastors, and it is always a privilege and, a, and just an honor to be up here for the next two weeks speaking about something that I believe that's very, very important as we continue our, our journey with, with Advent. So back in 1997, I'd been married, um, actually just got married, wow, 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 that was a long time ago. And I was in West Palm Beach, Florida, going to Palm Beach Atlantic College. And in Palm Beach Atlantic College, I had the, I had the honor of singing in the concert choir. Yes, I am a musician, that's what I went to college for. And one of the things that we did during that season, actually during that um, semester, was we got the opportunity to sing Handel's Messiah. How many of you know Handel's Messiah have heard of it? Probably you've heard of it before. If you're a musician, you definitely have heard of it before. And we had the pleasure of singing it in beautiful, beautiful churches um, all around West Palm and up and down the coast. And uh, if you know anything about Handel's Messiah, Handel was written, uh, the Messiah was written by a guy named George Frederick Handel. And uh, he, was a, he was a composer and an, an author, and, and he wrote uh, or, 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 oratorios and arias um, mostly Italian and German, and uh, his popularity was kind of decreasing, and so he decided he wanted to write something about Scripture, with Scripture references. And in 24 days, he wrote Handel's Messiah. 24 days. I would say there's a little help from somebody than just himself. Um, and Handel's Messiah, if you read, if you listen to it, I would encourage you, if that's your thing, it's two and a half hours to three hours. And it's the gospel of Jesus. It is the gospel of Jesus. And God used that for Frederick, for George Frederick Handel to, to take him to new levels um, and to actually be able to present the gospel, not in just the church world, but in the secular world. Well, I had the privilege to sing one of the arias. And the arias was um, uh, one called The People That Walked in Darkness. Now, I'm a bass. And so if you listen to it, it's in G minor. Now, for those of you who aren't musicians, that means it's very gloomy. It's very dark. And it goes a little, the people that walk in darkness. You hear what's going on, right? <laughs> that was me in darkness. And it was like low, but it was like very like gloomy. But I love, I mean, and so you're just hearing this. And this was the beautiful thing about Handel and I believe Holy Spirit riding through him. He wanted you to feel it because he was quoting Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2. The people who walked in living in darkness will see a great light. They are now living in a very dark land, but light will shine on them. And some of you are living in a very dark world right now, a very dark part of your life maybe. You're in a dark season, and it's like, mm, mm, mm. I mean, that's how you feel, right? You're like, this is just not good, and it's kind of ominous, and it's not good. Some of you are there right now. Some of you have been there. Some of you may even fix to step into that. It's very dark. But then afterward, we sang that, shall see a great light. Da, dun, 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 dun. For unto us a child is born, unto us. And it began from minor to major. It was intentional what Handel did there. For unto us. He was saying for unto us. Not unto them, but unto us. Unto you, unto me. A child is born. The people that walked in darkness. Uh, but guess what? For all of you who are walking in darkness, there's hope. There's hope. You demonstrated hope, ladies. There is hope for you. No matter where you are right now, that I love this because it was just such a, like, a shift. And I believe that God wants to shift some things in you and in me as well. The scripture says this, For unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Don't you want to have that? Wouldn't it be nice to have a wonderful counselor? Wouldn't it be nice to have a, but not good counselors. Wonderful counselor. Wonderful counselor. Mighty God. Oh, that's Jesus. That's power. Don't you want someone that's power? Yes, mighty God. Everlasting Father. The Father that will never leave you. Never. He's always going to be there. Everybody say it again. Peace. peace. The Prince of Peace. 
Now, it's interesting because I was thinking about that, kind of as I opened that, the Prince of Peace, I'm thinking, well, you've heard of the Prince of Egypt, the Prince of this country and the Prince of this, but he's the Prince of this thing, peace. And then if he's the Prince, then someone's the King, and God is the King of peace then, right? If he's the Prince and God's the King of peace, the land of peace, and don't you want to have peace in your home, in your marriage, in your finances? And everyone said, yes, amen, yes, sign me up. Where can I get some of that? I think it's all of us, right? We want this peace that passes on understanding. So in order for me to understand this peace, what is the opposite of peace? The opposite of peace is, is conflict. It's war. It's turmoil. And, and I want you to think about your life. Is there a lot of, and it's unrest. Oh, that's a huge one. Unrest. You feel like a lot of unrest is going on in here, your emotions, your family, your marriage, your home. There's a lot of unrest. There's a lot of turmoil. There's a lot of conflict going on. And I think that's for most of us, you're going to, here's the thing, you're going to experience those. But here's what Jesus tells us, which is so amazing that he tells us in John 14, 27, and it's what we read, the ladies, thank you for reading that. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. So Jesus gives us something. My peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not as the world does, because some of you are searching for peace in all the wrong places. You're diving in trying to find that peace, and it's not giving you peace. It's giving you more war, more conflict, more turmoil, because you're putting a peace in a man, in a relationship, in a job, and it doesn't come from anything else but Jesus. That's where peace comes. Peace comes from Jesus. So he says, let your hearts not be troubled, neither let them be afraid, because I want to give you something. And here is the soul tattoo for today. Soul tattoo is your soul, is your mind, your will, and emotions. The way you think, the way you act, your will, and the way you feel, your emotions. All these tattooed, if we can grab a hold of this, talk about it in your groups, talk about it in your home, talk about it in the car ride. Here it is, true peace isn't found in the absence of problems, but in the presence of Jesus. True peace, because here's what I know, I've had a lot of problems, and you're going to have a lot of problems, but in the midst of problems and circumstances, I can have peace. Does that mean I can have peace in the midst of, of, the, of the tire blowing out, of the air conditioning going, of the kids screaming, and they will not stop, okay? I can have peace. And some of you are like, I wish I could have that. I want to walk in peace. Well, here's the thing, though. If, if Jesus is true and his word is true and you're a follower of Jesus, then you have it. In other words, he's, he's given that to you. My peace, I, I give you. You know, my, my son, um, I, I, my, a couple, I have a couple kids. And uh, um, actually, I have more than that. Gee, I have four. Um, but our kids have something, and most of your kids probably do. And I remember one of, one of my sons, he had a thing, and this isn't it, but it's called his blankie. And his blankie, when we gave him his blankie, it was like giving him shelter and peace and softness. And like he felt safe and at peace when he had blankie with him. Now, you take blankie away. War broke out in our home. <laughs> Kidding, not war, but you take blank away, it's not good. And in fact, if he went to a babysitter and they're like, hey, he's crying out for something called blanky, we're like, oh no, it's gonna be a rough night for you, sir. <laughs> you know, we gotta get blanky to him because blanky, when he had blanky, it was like, ah. Oh. So we gave him blanky. And even sometimes he, whenever he was feeling like physically sick or physically bad, he would run to his room, grab his, grab his blanket and come sit at the table. Because why? There's something peaceful about this thing that we gave him. Now Jesus is given us peace. He's given this to us. Like, this is peace. God's, Jesus says, my peace I leave you. So we have this peace that he wants us to experience and so, and so the, 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 the question that I have that is that if Jesus offers this, then why are so many of us in this room living in anxiety, in unrest, in turmoil? And that's nobody's fault, hear me. I'm just saying, wait a minute, if we have this peace, well, he's either lied and said, here, you can have this peace, now, now I'm going to take it back. Or he's a good father 
And maybe there's something that we're, that we're not doing or we need to be participate, participatory in to help understand and embrace the peace. And here's what I need you to know for some of you. I don't know who this is for, but some of you think this morning is this. I don't deserve the peace. I've done too much. I'm a horrible person. And here's what I want you to know, too, is like my son, when I gave this to my son, when he like, you didn't clean your room, son, give me your blankie back. Oh. Isn't that, wouldn't that be a horrible dad? Yeah. He has to earn that. No, I give it to him because I know that he embraces this and that it's going to bring comfort. And it's going to help him sleep at night and it's peace. So I'm a man that I like to know, okay, if this isn't happening, okay, if we're in a room full of people, and I dare say that some of us here in this room, we want that, right? I think we all had most of I want peace. I want the peace of Jesus. So if you're a follower of Jesus, first thing is you have it. Question would be, if I have it, then why am I experiencing it? Well, one of, the other thing that we talked about this about a few months ago, you have an enemy. You do. His name is Satan, and he, want, he doesn't want you to experience anything, peace, joy, hope, and love, all those things that represent Jesus. He will do everything he can to keep you from experiencing the peace of Jesus. Everything. You name it, let's just see what he can do. And I want to give you basically things that I would tell myself, I would hope that I would learn from this, is, okay, if, if these things, what are things that are keeping me from experiencing that? And then what are things that I can do to experience more of the peace that Jesus, apparently I have, because Jesus doesn't lie. His word doesn't lie. So I want you to take your, take your, take your um, insert out. And we're just going to go through these fairly quickly this morning. But So why do not people experience the peace of Jesus? Well, number one, I'm going to use these. I'll use these. So there's the peace. I want to experience Jesus' peace because you have misplaced priorities. In other words, your number one is not Jesus. You say it is, but it's really not. And you're putting, other, you're putting priorities in some other thing other than where the number one needs to be. And so, therefore, you're, it's covered. You, 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 it's, I mean, it's there, but you got some misplaced priorities. Priorities. Isaiah 26.3 says this, You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. Guess what? When I'm scrolling through Facebook, my mind is not on peace of Jesus. My mind is on, mm, careful what I say, my mind is on taking somebody out because it just frustrates me. It gets me angry, Right? Because my priorities were mixed up. And I'm not saying that it's good or bad. Hear me. Just hear me. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you as well. So misplaced priorities. Augustine of Hippo said this. Our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. And you're probably trying to find your rest in something else besides Jesus. Number two is this. This is a hard hitter. Y'all want to experience the peace of Jesus. Why can't I? Because there's unresolved sin. You've got sin. There's something in your life that you are doing that is not what the Lord wants. It's not what Jesus wants. And it's sin. And so that's another thing that's covering up the peace. It's keeping you from experiencing the peace that Jesus wants to give you. David talks about this. Listen, this is this powerful scripture. Psalm 32, 3 through 4. Um, so, so powerful. For when I kept silent, in other words, I didn't say anything, my bones wasted up away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up. As by the heat of the summer. He was hiding. He was, he was in sin. And he wasn't confessing it. He wasn't taking care of it. So some of you, you know what that is right now. Some of it's hidden. Some of it's secret. I'm just telling you why. Why can't I experience the peace of Jesus? Because you've got sin. That he's pointing and saying, you got to deal with this in your life. Number three is this. Some of us have fear and anxiety. And here's the thing, I, nobody chooses, I don't think you're like, I don't have fear and anxiety, but some of you do, and you're allowing it to control you. You don't think, you just think that's just how it's going to be, fear, anxiety, I'm going to have that. But he tells us so many, do not be afraid, Jesus says, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. He offers us something that we can't offer ourselves, that we can't fix ourselves. And oftentimes with fear and anxiety, you don't tell anyone about it, you think you're the only one that's experienced it, right? I know I am. So who would I tell? I'm not tell anybody. So therefore, the enemy is like, that's right, shut up, and you just take that on. But Jesus says, come to me. I, want to, I can take care of this. Fear and anxiety. Corey Ten Boone says this, worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows. It empty, empties today of its strength. Worries do not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. So if you're always worrying, 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 guess what? You're not experiencing the peace of Jesus. But he wants you to. But it's not, let me just say this, it's not his fault. <laughs> we tend to put things on that. Number four is this, a lack of faith in God's sovereignty. 
That, that word simply means that I trust God, that, that no matter what happens, I believe that God is good and that his word is true. And I may not understand the circumstances. I don't understand why this person died or this happened or this happened or this person said this or did this or why they separated. I don't understand that, but I trust God. But when you have a lack of that, you're like, I don't know why that happened. You become very negative. Negativity breeds negativity. You push away, you push away, and you add that onto it. And there, guess, guess what? That piece of Jesus is there still. It's just buried under a lot of stuff. In order to get to it, we have to do some things. Number five, actually listen to what it says there. I love it. And we know that for, that, that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, all things work together for good. And you are called. Each one of you are followers of Jesus. You are called. And he wants to give you that peace. And he wants to equip you with what he can give you to fulfill what he's put in your heart number five is this this is the other thing that we do and um we we neglect something very very important we talk about this a lot here about knowing god it's number one is neglect of prayer and the word we neglect we, we neglect the time to to talk to the father when things get i don't like this word and those of you know me i'm going to say it but i do not like it when things get busy what's the first thing we drop god Right? I mean, I'm not being like judgmental, but first thing we drop is, well, I just don't have time for that. God will understand. And, and he, he does understand, but he, he wants, desires this intimate, deep relationship with each one of you. You're like, I don't have peace. Well, are you spending time with Jesus? No. Then you're not going to have it. You're going to have a peace that's false. You're going to have a peace of the world that's not what Jesus desires for you. He tells us this, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything. By prayer, prayer, supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and minds in Christ Jesus. D.L. Moody says this, a little faith will bring your soul to heaven, but a lot of faith will bring heaven to your soul. To your soul. And I mean, that's what I want. I want. I want to be walking in this, so I'm, heaven is coming. My soul is getting filled. Is your soul, do you feel like your soul is being filled or do you feel empty? Do you feel dark? Do you feel the darkness? And you're waiting for four and I'm waiting, but all I can hear and all I can see is darkness. There's hope. There's hope. So what can we do then? If this is true or these are the things that keep us, which, which it is, and there's, I, I, we could, there could be a list of so many more things, but what is it? That we could do then, if it's there, if that piece is buried under some of the things, what, what can we do? Five things that I think will help you. Um, there's so many more that we could do, but these are just five I want to just give you briefly. And remember, the first one was our misplaced priorities. If we have misplaced priorities, then what can we do? Center your heart on Jesus. Center your heart. If you have these priorities here that are misplaced, okay, I'm not going to, I'm going to center my heart on Jesus. Jesus. I'm going to center it on, on him. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Begin your day, if you want to practical. When you wake up in the morning, say, good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Father. Just, you're like, but that's weird. No, it's not. If you believe he's with you and it's not, maybe it is weird. You're right. Maybe it is weird. You're right. But as it becomes part of who you are, it's not weird. It's relationship. Good morning, Jesus. Begin to center your lives on him. I love the song, the hymn we used to sing. um, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of the earth will go strangely dim. In other words, that doesn't matter anymore. Let's kick it off stage. In the light of your glory and grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Number two is this, so, okay, let's say it's unconfessed, like, unconfessed sin, undealt with sin. Number two is this, confess and repent. This is a hard one, I know, for some of you. Confess and repent. If you're in, if you're with, have sin in your life that you've been struggling with, the best thing to do is to confess. 1 John 1, 1, 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness confess your sins to the lord i would say take it a step further confess your sins one to another so that you may be healed tomorrow morning i meet with about uh, six to eight guys on iron man zoom iron man it's just for guys and i'm telling you what i confess 
I'm trying to learn an art. It's the, uh, the, 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 the discipline of confession. I know that sounds weird, but confess. Hey, I'm struggling with anxiety. I'm struggling with depression. I've got these thoughts that aren't good to confess those. Some of you, that needs to happen. It needs to happen in your life. Um, number three, surrender your worries to God. So if you've got fear and anxiety, surrender them. And here's what I know about anxiety and fear. Like, I don't want to be fearful. I don't want to have anxiety. I believe you. And you're like, I tried to confess it. I tried to surrender. Don't give up. Keep surrendering them. Keep giving them to Jesus. Keep giving them to the Lord. Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. A great little action step to do when you start to worry. Write those worries down. Pray over them, releasing them into God's hands. Write them down. I'm worried about this. I worry about this. I write it down, put it in a box, pray over it, and give them to God. And when you start to worry again, say, no, 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 no. I put that in the box. I'm giving it to you, Father. Surrender your worries to God. You want to experience the peace of God? This is so important. Number four, embrace a life of gratitude. Like if you're one that like doesn't think that God's like, I don't know if God's got it all control, if God understands everything, he does. And when you embrace a life of gratitude, you you're change. Your mindset begins to change. You begin to see things differently. That peace that, that used to have conflict begins to come up. And that unrest and stirring, like, I have peace. Because guess what? You're starting to be grateful. You write a gratitude journal. Write in that. Begin to write a gratitude journal. There's so much negativity in our world. We're hearing about how this and 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 this. But guess what? There's a lot of good going on. God is still moving. God is still saving. There's revivals popping up all around the world. And what if God wants to say, listen, come on, there's good things happening. we got to focus on the great good things that God's doing instead of all the other stuff that seems to drag us down and divide us as well. Number five is this, to cultivate Cultivate, this is important, quietness and prayer. So if you have this neglect and you're like, you're not, you're not reading the word and I just don't feel like I have time, cultivate it. In other words, discipline yourself. Get up five minutes early. Get up ten minutes early. Stay up a little bit later if that's your the night on. Listen, turn off your phone. Get connected and just have that time with the Lord. Quietness. Here's what is crazy. I, I've talked to many people and this is the craziest thing I've ever heard. But it's true. I said, hey. Hey, my friend, how long do you ever, when do you have time to just to sit down and to reflect and just to think? Nobody there, no phone, nothing, just to sit and think. This, this lady looked at me like I was crazy. She's like, never. That's not good. You need time to quiet your heart before the Lord and be still. Scripture tells us be still and know that he's God. When was the last time you were still? Like, I don't have time for that. You don't not have time not to not have time for that. You better make time for that. Because guess what? Let me just tell you this. If you don't make time to be still, God will get you still some way. I'm just saying. He will, he will still. I'm, mm, he will. You may not like it, but he will. Make time to be still before the Lord. Set aside those times to do that. You know, Susan, Susan Wesley, the mother of John Wesley, she would sit quietly with her apron over her head to pray amidst the chaos of her home. She found peace by making God himself. So she would, the kids would run around, she's like, hold on, I need a time for peace. <laughs> Dear Lord. Hey, be quiet, I'm trying to be with the Lord. You know, she would take that time, that peace. She would, she would make that moment. And the kids knew that. Whatever it takes to keep this close to you instead of the things, the enemy letting it pile up. What are you doing? What can you do? God desires us as followers. If you're a follower of Jesus, now if you're not a follower of Jesus, this is not going to make sense to you because you're not, you're not going to be able to experience his peace because you have to have Jesus to experience his peace. But if you're a follower of Jesus, he, desire, he wants you to walk in peace. As a husband, what if you could be the husband that walks in peace? The peace of the Lord, a wife, a mom, a dad, a worker, that when you walk in the office, it just, the peace of Jesus is all over you and through you. He desires that for you, but we have to work on some things ourselves and not just hope it happens. So if you say, God, where are you? I want your peace. You haven't given me your peace. It's not his fault. It's ours. 
And as followers of Jesus, he's given it to us. He wants us to be able to peel back some things to experience. Mm. What my son can experience. What your kids do. Those of you moms and dads, you know what this is when you see your kid with it. They're just, they're, they're, their face. What if the Holy Spirit wants to do that right now for you? Let him wrap you up in that. Would you stand with me right now? As you, as you stand with me, we're, we're going we're gonna to do something this morning that, we're going to practice something that helps me too. Sometimes when I don't feel it, and I don't all the time, I have to speak truth or sing truth and let my emotions catch up to the truth. So we're going to sing a song, and it's, and it's called Tremble. And it's speaking peace over your life. Because some of you don't have peace right now. And it's there. Like, like he wants it to rise up, but sometimes we got to remember that it's there. It says as far as Handel's Messiah, there's a very popular part of it, and it was the Hallelujah Chorus. Some of you know it. You probably, that's one of the most popular parts. Oh, hallelujah. And it was just like a, it was a, it was a, it was loud when they sang it. And it was powerful. It was a declaration for the Lord God omnipotent. He was declaring reigneth forever and ever and ever they were declaring it. Well, King George II was in, was in the seats, and it was the first time coming to London there the first time anybody had heard it there in London. And when that chorus came on, it says, then it's not heard, but it says that he stood to his feet. Like something in him said, we got to, dec- like, I don't know what it was, but declare this. And when he stood, like, when the king stands, you stand too. Because in culture after that, it says when it came, like, it came to that chorus, if you go to, to places where they do handle Messiah, during that chorus, people will stand. He was making a declaration. And maybe today you need to make a declaration yourself. You need to decide that I'm going to recenter my heart on Jesus. But for those of you who don't know Jesus, here's the first thing. You've got to receive that into your life. You've got to receive Jesus. Maybe you've been pushing away, pushing away. You're like, I don't need him. I don't need him. But maybe for the first time you realize, I do need him. Just like these ladies said, I need Jesus. You need Jesus. And let him wash you. Let him fill you with the peace that passes all understanding so with our head bowed and our eyes closed this morning father i thank you for today i thank you father that that god you desire for us to experience that we don't don't have to say god please give me your peace you're not some dad that like holds it from us you have it you say i've given it to you johnny then god what's going on and you may say johnny you got sin johnny you're pushing me away so father whatever that is right now i pray that we'd lean in and not push back to your spirit father for that person here that doesn't know you that's never received you into their heart god this is that moment for you sir ma'am that you can say yes to jesus it's simply receiving that gift just like that blanket right i had to give it to my son he could have said i don't want that but he received it and so you just have to receive the love and the belief that jesus did die for you that he paid the price to give you life and when you do that you're a child of god he begins to fill you power of his holy spirit so father in this moment i pray that as we sing this song and declare this song that god we would sing it father even if we don't feel it and father some of us would go to the altar and just get before you god and we would just say we would apologize we would confess i am sorry god there's sin in my life and i want to experience your peace and so this is step one for me Maybe for some of us, we need to go to the people that are, that are praying, God, our prayer team, and say, would you just pray for me? There's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of unrest in my home. And I need the peace of Jesus to rise up. Father, I just ask that, God, in this moment that some of us, we may need to go to, to take communion and say, Jesus, we got to get you back center. Because you're like five down the list, and it's not, coming, it's not looking too well with my marriage, with my wife, with my finances, with my kiddos. So I'm getting you right back, Jesus. And for some of us, God, may we need to know light a candle. This is that response time that we have to go light the candle. It says, I need, God, relight that peace in me. Just like they lit it this morning, light it back up in me, Father. Let me feel and experience the peace that passes all understanding. And Father, we just thank you for that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray.